This free step-by-step -step video comes to you directly from Haynes, creators of the world's best repair manuals. Fix your car or truck the right way with our accurate and reliable information at your side. You can complete more than 200 jobs on this vehicle when you purchase the complete online manual at Haynes.com. Before raising the vehicle, set the parking brake and remove the wheel hub nut cover. Loosen, but do not remove the wheel hub nut. Loosen, but do not remove the wheel lug nuts. Raise the front of the vehicle and support it securely on jack stands. Then remove the wheel and lug nuts of the drive axle being serviced. Remove the inner fender well splash shield preventing access to the drive axle being serviced. Remove the wheel hub nut. Do not reuse the old hub nut upon reinstallation. Remove the fasteners retaining the disc brake caliper and mounting bracket assembly. Then hang the assembly out of the way with a coat hanger. Do not let the assembly hang by the brake hose. Remove the disc. Remove the wheel speed sensor in its fastener. Then the plastic retainer securing the wire. Loosen and remove the steering knuckle to strut lower mounting nuts and not the bolts. The bolts are serrated and cannot be turned. Tap the bolts out with a brass hammer. Pull the steering knuckle outward and away from the strut. Then pull the drive axle outer CV joint out of the steering knuckle. If necessary, tap the end of the outer CV joint on the drive axle with a soft faced hammer while having the old nut loosely installed on the end to prevent thread damage. Make sure to remove the washer on the outer CV joint, and if the new drive axle does not have one supplied, reuse it for installation. Support the drive axle outer CV joint with a bungee cord while removing the inner CV joint from the transaxle. Place a drain pan under the inner CV joint to catch transmission fluid spillage. Then pry out the inner CV joint from the transaxle. Remove the drive axle, being careful not to damage the transaxle oil seal. Clean and lubricate the transaxle oil seal with a film of transmission lubricant. Clean and lubricate the inner CV joint splined end with a coat of transmission lubricant. Install the drive axle, ensuring it has a new snap ring on the inner CV joint and make sure the snap ring opening is facing downward. Push the inner CV joint in all the way, then pull outward on the inner CV joint to ensure that the snap ring is locked into place. Clean the splines on the steering knuckle, then clean the outer CV joint splines. Insert the outer CV joint end of the drive axle into the steering knuckle, first making sure that the washer has been installed onto the outer CV joint prior to inserting. Align the steering knuckle holes with the ones on the strut, then insert the studs. Screw the nuts onto the studs. Then tighten the nuts while preventing the studs from turning, holding them with a wrench. 
Tighten the nuts to 65 foot-pounds. Then tighten them an additional quarter turn. Install the wheel speed sensor in its fastener. Then secure the plastic retainer. Tighten the wheel speed sensor fastener securely, but do not over tighten. Install the brake disc, holding it still with a couple of lug nuts loosely installed. Install the brake caliper mounting bracket assembly over the disc, then install the fasteners. Tighten the fasteners to 125 foot-pounds. Install a new hub nut onto the CV joint end. Apply the brakes to keep the hub from turning, then tighten the nut to 118 foot-pounds. Install the front fender well splash shield. Tighten the fasteners securely. Install the wheels and lug nuts. Safely lower the vehicle. Then tighten the lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds.